Hi there, I'm Robert, and welcome back to another edition of the High Desert Ranch channel. And uh, tonight it's a little truck talk, something I haven't done in quite some time. <laughs> uh, mainly because I'm trying to focus on the positive, but uh, there's just certain things that I've noticed that uh, you can't you can't get around, and where um, I really like to watch um, certain market trends and things of that nature. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, the overall cattle market and what it means for not only ranchers, but especially for you, the consumer. Um, so if you're joining me for the first time, welcome. Uh, if you're returning, uh, welcome back. And I appreciate your support. And there's a lot of other channels that you'll be watching. And I appreciate that um, you're joining me here tonight. This is just uh, you and I here talking in the truck after all the chores are done uh, late uh, on a on a on an evening just uh, two people talking but uh, one of the things that is most alarming and I'm just gonna get to it right off the bat is the um, the ghost cattle I don't know if you heard about this but Tyson Foods was scammed out of nearly a quarter billion dollars in cattle um, a man a rancher in eastern Washington he pled guilty 11 years in prison and he is um, supposedly had 260,000 head of cattle that he was going to um, give over to Tyson Foods for them to be able to process. And uh, if you don't know, Tyson Food is one of the top four largest processors here in the United States when it comes to uh, meat products, uh, beef and chicken, but specifically with the beef. Uh, so this is a big deal as far as the amount of cattle um, that were promised to Tyson Foods but also to seeing the, the trends that we see from the cattle markets. Uh, as you might have heard or may not heard, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, the Plains, uh, they've all been getting hammered as far as with the droughts and uh, the lack of rains. There's been uh, very much an Indian summer, which is great if you're not in the agricultural business. Uh, but if you are in the agricultural business, it is not looking pretty, especially because over the course of the summertime, like I say, those aforementioned places, they were getting hammered by by this drought and they were selling off by the thousands. The lines stretched for miles on the highway at the cell barns, which is great for the cell barns, not great for the ranchers, producers. And so going into this dry, very um, dry autumn and we're not getting the rains, that's A, might affect the harder uh, winter wheat, the red winter wheat crops. Uh, if we don't get rain soon, uh, because those have been planted, especially up in the high plains and places like Montana. Uh, but it's affecting the amount of feed that's available for these producers of cattle. They're forced to, they've been forced to sell off down massive sell offs here in the summer. But now going into the, to the autumn, the fall, they're not getting the rains. And they're also, it's now affecting places like Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri, as far as the, the rains that are not coming and not falling and things are really starting to dry out um, in these other areas that um, raise a lot of cattle but the areas that have already been affected uh, like i say texas oklahoma kansas uh, those types of areas um, even on up into the upper great plains these cattle there there's not the cattle numbers in fact they've sold off so much that um the numbers can be a little bit deceiving because the usda the numbers if you just look straight at the numbers they look really great compared to even last year but the problem is, is that um, what we're seeing is most of the calf sell off is over with. Um, and the numbers are higher by about 2,000 heads, so that seems good. But when you dive in on the numbers, 41% uh, of the cattle uh, only weigh, this year, only weigh over 600 pounds. Whereas last year, it was 75% of the cattle uh, that, the, that were being sold, the calves being sold, weighed over 600 pounds. So even though the numbers are a lot higher, um, keep in mind that the weight is a lot lower, but also too, that the push is already over with. So we're going to see massive drop offs as far as the amount of cattle auction, uh, because everyone is selling up front really high, um, the amount of numbers, cause they're having to force, you know, the, the usual gluttony of cattle that come in at this time of year, the numbers are high, but the weight is a lot lower, like I said, and we're not going to see. Um, these continue to stay numbers as far as in the cattle market. I know here out west in Utah, it's been the same thing. Uh, the cattle numbers have been high, but the actual weight of the cattle has been down. Uh, and 
just like Texas and all these other places have been getting hit with drought. Well, it's been the drought conditions out here for the last few years. So places like Wyoming, Nevada, Utah, uh, New Mexico, and even Arizona, we haven't recovered as far as our numbers. In fact, the overall in the United States is some of the lowest cattle numbers we, we've seen in decades. Um, and to can further compound that problem is we don't have the heifer replacement. A lot of people have been selling these fat cattle, um, the ones that need to go to um, these producers, or the, excuse me, these processors, but a lot of heifers have been thrown in with that because, you know, if you're not quite familiar with that, you need to feed over the winter the heifers, whereas the steers, you, you raise them and then they go off to the feedlots. But what also we've been seeing in places like Texas and all these other places that have been experiencing massive uh, drought is the sell-off of their heifers, uh, the female cows that, um, you know, put two and two together. A bull breeds with the cows and the heifers, and then you get more calves. So we saw this back in 2011, 2012, as far as the numbers, and they rebounded. But unfortunately, being out here in the West, people have been selling off, selling off, selling off because of the drought and they can't afford the feed or they can't raise enough feed. And so they've been selling it off to the feedlots. Now you compound that, couple that with Texas and what we see in the plains, uh, lower and upper plains, central plains, is people have been selling off their their cows as well, but they're also selling off the heifers. And in fact, we've reached a point where there is now less heifers to, to the steers um, ratio. So uh, things are very interesting. Um, if you've got heifers and those female cows and the replacements, hold on to them if you can, because they're gonna be worth a lot of money. What it means for the consumer is, and this is part of the whole Tyson thing, is uh, over a quarter million um, head of cattle don't exist. And uh, Tyson is out $150 million, which they are a multi-billion dollar company, but it's more the amount of cattle that they were depending on that they're out. And coupled that with now that um, the, the cows, the, the, the cattle, the steers that were being sold are some of the lightest numbers we've ever seen for this year. But now the numbers are going to really drop off. Uh, but the, the, produce, the, the processors are are aggressive. They need to, the demand for meat has never been higher. Uh, the Beyond Impossible meat, all that stuff is collapsing. They're turning away from that. And so um, these processors, they're looking to buy more and more cows, but those numbers just aren't going to be there, you guys. And the weight isn't going to be there. And those that are feeding up north in the northern plains and out here in the west, um, it's going to be more of a lean, uh, a lean winter as far as what people are growing uh, and the, the feeds and the, the winter, um, the hay that they're going to winter over on. Uh, so it's just, it'll be quite interesting. It's going to be one of those things of prepare for higher meat prices, guys, because of A, this ghost cattle situation, but also just the the overall numbers uh, that are coming in and uh, on a national scale. So it's, um, all I got to say is buckle up. If you know a rancher, I always, on my truck talks, I plug local, local, local. Find a local rancher down the road, even if he, he or she's only selling a couple head of cattle. Um, if you can put those the money straight into the pocket of these ranchers, um, it's going to help a long way, especially those that are looking to sell down uh, because they can't uh, feed them or they don't have the feed or they won't have the feed come wintertime. Uh, please buy from those local people. So um, that's it, guys. That's all I have for tonight. Um, if you um, please leave any comments, what you're seeing in your area. Um, I would love to know that. I read all of your comments. And if necessary, I reply to your comments. Um, I really appreciate reading those because it lets me know and the rest of those people watching this video, what's going on in your area, how much cows are selling for the amount of the sell barns. I know, like I say, the numbers are up high where I'm at the cell barn, but we're going to see a steep drop off. Um, we've been blessed out here, here in Utah, um, with some of these summer rains. That's the only thing that saved our bacon because we didn't have the snowpack. So, uh, anyways, I appreciate you coming along. Um, thanks for joining me here on this edition of, um, truck talk here on the high desert ranch and I'll catch y'all next time.